3 that's that's at 46.7 so that's in between 3 and 4 so our median value seems to be around here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a box here on that sorry a line a vertical line that looks something like this okay that's my median okay my median okay Okay, let's keep that in mind. Uh, our first quartile is at 16.64. So 16.64 seems to be in around here somewhere. Okay, so that's my first quartile. Okay, that's in here. Okay, uh, then my third quartile is at 64. Well, 64 seems to be in around here somewhere. Okay, so that's my third quartile is here. Okay, so that's from here. Whoops, a daisy. Okay, that's from here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw a box around these particular values. Okay, so what we have is we have something that looks like this. So that's going to give us a box. A box. This is the box part of our box and whiskers plot. This is Q1. This is Q3 here. And the center line is the median. Okay. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to just put on this particular scale here the smaller values in my data set. Okay? The smallest values in my data set seem to be 0, 1, 2, 3. So we have 0 is here, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. Okay? And then the larger values in my data set I'm also going to put onto this particular scale here. Okay? The larger values in my data set seem to be 175. Well, 175 seems to be in here. That's 175 seems to be around here somewhere. Uh, we have, what else is a large value? We have 114 is a large value. And the other larger values in here, we have 156, which seems to be in around here somewhere, okay? And so on and so forth. The next largest value is about 114, 112. 114, 112 is in around here somewhere, okay? So I'm just putting them some large values Values and some small values on this particular plot because it's going to be important for us. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is this: is I'm going to take my lower bound value. Okay. Actually, let's take the upper bound value first, which is 135. Okay. And we're going to put that position on this particular graph. So 135. Okay. Seems to be 135. Seems to be in here somewhere. Okay. That this here. And I'm gonna just give it. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this now in a second. Okay, that's there. And the lower bound outliers is at minus 54. Hmm. But I'm not gonna put that in now. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Okay. Now the important thing here is this: is that what we know is this: is that from an upper bound outlier position, based off our statistic, we're saying that any observations greater than 125 are being classified as possible unusually large values. So in other words, this particular value here. And this particular value here are being classified as upper bound outliers. Okay, this is our upper bound outlier position here. This is our our U B O. Okay, now there is no values in our data set less than minus fifty four. Okay, there's no values. They're all the smallest value is zero. So actually, what we do here in this case here is that we put the the line. We're going to put the line at the smallest value. Okay, we're not going to go down to minus fifty four. We're going to just actually put it at the smallest value, which is going to give us a line that goes goes somewhere here in relation to this and maybe what I'll do is just make this line a bit bigger okay and what we end up with is we end up with what's known as a box here's the box this is the box okay the box okay and these two things here okay these two things here okay are known as the whiskers the whiskers okay okay Anything bigger than the upper bound outlier, this is our UBO. These are classified to be upper bound outliers. Upper upper bound outliers. They're upper bound outliers. And anything less than this particular lower bound outlier here, okay? Anything less than this will be classified as lower bound lower bound outliers. Okay. Lower bound outliers. And then this particular situation we don't have any lower bound outliers okay? now maybe just something else to actually just do here while we're while we're while we're discussing this okay from a distribution perspective well the median the interquartile range the interquartile range is the distance between here and here this is the IQR and what we know is that 50 percent of our observations are within the interquartile range okay so the bulk of our observations are within this particular part of the distribution here there's another 25 percent of them here okay and there's another 25 percent here so actually from a graph perspective you can sort of see that the bulk of our observations okay 
the bulk of our observations, okay, are going to be are going to be in this particular region here, okay? Uh, and I'd suggest that the mean value, you haven't calculated the mean, that the mean value would be somewhere down, that this, the mean value would be somewhere down here, okay? If, or maybe even a little bit more across, okay? That the mean value probably is somewhere down here. But the important thing to know here is that this distribution from a, when we look at the box and whiskers plot, it's positively skewed, okay? And the thing that causes the positive skewness, well, one of the contributors to the positive skewness are these unusually large values. Okay, guys, uh, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I know that there was an awful lot that we did in this particular video. Actually, we have five previous videos that calculate the median, the first quartile, the third quartiles, the lower bound and our upper bound outliers. And we did it all in one go in this particular video so that we could actually produce a box and whiskers plot. So once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I do hope that this video was intuitive and more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thank you for watching. Okay, bye-bye.